Welcome, everybody, and glad to be with you today. Um, I thought it would be appropriate to um, talk about price action. We're at a point in the market where uh, things can go either way. I mean, we've, we've had a nice trend higher, uh, but we're at a point now where, where things can really go either way, and, and I thought price action would be um, a very simple and easy technique to use to help you judge uh, what the next direction of this market would be. So I thought I'd share that with you. This is the magic of price action. And <clears throat> as Re uh, Renee said, I am Vince Ford. I'm the head trader here at Trading Wins. I've been doing this for a little over 30 years now. During that time, uh, aside from coaching uh, traders such as yourself, I have developed strategies and trading systems that are not only used by retail traders such as yourself now, but also several uh, money managers and hedge funds. Please do remember that trading can be risky. So I highly encourage you not to trade with real money until you're completely comfortable with the system that you are using. Before every presentation, I always like to ask the same question. Out of curiosity, how many of you have seen me present at an event or a webinar such as this before? Uh, please take a moment to just type in yes or no. Really appreciate it. I'm going to take a sip of my water and we'll get right into this. Okay, excellent. Thank you so much. Um, in today's presentation, as I mentioned, I'm going to be talking about price action and more specifically, you know, what it is, how, how you can use it, how you can trade with it, and also talk a bit about uh, the reversal and continuation patterns. In other words, pivot points, why they are so crucial, why, uh, why you should be using them, and um, really one of the main reasons is to help you identify uh, Support and resistance. And support and resistance is such a core aspect of technical analysis that if you don't know how to identify it and use it, you really make, you're really going to make it difficult for yourself to um, uh, to succeed with your trading. So I, uh, I wanted to share that with you as well. And then we're going to cover a couple of uh, tools and indicators that you can use along with price action and hopefully we'll have some time at the end of this presentation uh, for some Q&A. <clears throat> so price action, what is it? Well, in simple terms, it's the movement of, of the uh, securities price. So price action is actually what we use to make sense of all that random back and forth movement and what's you know, a, a clear example of that are the swing highs and the swing lows, which help us identify those areas of resistance or or support. Now, I want to cover the true basics of what it is and, and how to identify it. And it really comes down to the actual bars or candlesticks, whichever one you prefer to use. I prefer to use candlesticks. You can also use open, high, low, closed bars. It really doesn't matter. You'll be reading each candle or each bar the exact same way. <clears throat> and this is what I want to get across today. How you can read a chart candle by candle or bar by bar and know all the way through two very important things. Who won the individual battle on that particular bar or candle and who's in control overall, buyers or sellers. If you're not able to spot that, you're really clueless and, and unable to trade on it. Once you, you can read it clearly, it becomes much, much easier. And doing it this way is not only simple, but it's extremely effective. And I hope to share or show that uh, to you by the end of the presentation. So let's talk about the individual candlesticks here. Now, on most charting platforms, you're either going to see clear candles or, or green uh, for bullish candles. And you're either going to see black or red for uh, bearish candles. Which, whichever color you use, it really doesn't matter as long as you know which one is bullish and which one is bearish. The reason you need to know that, or, or the reason why you want to know that, it's going to help you read this candle. So what it means if it's bullish here, if it's clear or green, is that the opening price for that candle, and again, this doesn't matter if it's a five minute, a 15 minute, a daily candle, weekly, monthly, it doesn't matter. You read them all the same. The opening price is at the lower edge of the body. The closing price 
is at the upper edge of the button. This is why it's colored, uh, it's either clear or green, because it closed higher than where it opened. And that, that's, that's how you can tell. So, no, <laughs> excuse me, the way you read this is you open here, at some point within this session, we went as high as this point and as low as this point, and then we closed up at the upper edge of the body, okay? So on this particular candle, we can say that the buyers won this particular tug of war. Every single candle or every single bar is a tug of war between buyers and sellers. So the length of the body, the range from high to low, all of those things are factors that we take into consideration when trying to decide how tough of a battle was it and how who won that battle and how big of a win or a, how big of a loss was it. All of those are important factors for reading that chart overall, okay? And, and we'll dive a little deeper into that as we go through the presentation. On the flip side, the red or black candle means that the opening price was at the upper edge of the body. Then at some point throughout this session, we moved as high as this point, as low as this point, and we closed at the lower edge of the body. So the close was lower than the open, and that's why it is black or red. Okay? Now, you can have some very small candles. You can have some very wide range candles from high to low. Here's the difference. If you look at the smaller white candle here on the left, you read it the same way. We opened here at the lower edge of the body. At some point, we went as low as this point, as high as this point, and then we settled down at the upper edge of the body. So who, who won this battle, this individual battle? Well, because it's clear, because we closed higher than where we opened, we can say that the buyers had the edge here. But because the range from that close to, to where it opened is very tight, it wasn't a huge win, was it? It's a slight win. And also, the range from high to low is fairly tight as well, meaning it wasn't much of a tug of war either. Okay, there's a, a, a bit of a battle, but it was all in a very tight range, so not much of a fight going on there. As opposed to this candle here, which has a much wider range from high to low and even a much wider body. Now, we read it the same way. We open at the lower edge of the body. At some point, we, we got as low as this point, as high as this point, and settled up here. So who won this battle? Well, we can still say buyers won it, but we can say they, they won it by a much wider margin. In other words, they were able to drive the price all the way up here from the opening. So they were fully in control here uh, during this session and finished strongly. Now also, the range was fairly high. So it was a much bigger fight, wasn't it? So what that means is it was a much more significant win. When the buyers win this type of candle, it doesn't mean as much as when they win this type of candle, right? So it means the buyers are stronger here. You need to pay attention to the wider range bars. On the flip side, these black bars, again, we open up here, went as high as here, as low as here, settled in here. Sellers had a slight advantage, not much of a fight. Here, the sellers were able to drive it all the way down and actually close, you know, fairly close to those lows. So <clears throat> again, much bigger fight, much bigger win for the sellers, okay? This is all about pressure, either buying pressure or selling pressure. Small bars, not much pressure there. Wider range bars, a lot more pressure. Now, you're gonna run into bars or candles where we open at the very low of the day or, or whatever time frame that candle was and close at the very high. So there's no wicks or tails on there at all. These are the most significant candles that you're gonna see and run across. You should pay a lot of attention to these for a couple of reasons, okay? <clears throat> First of all, the range is important. The wider the range from high to low, the more important it is, okay? <clears throat> and because we open here and close at the very highs, 
not only can we say buyers were in control, you know, they dominated. That's the way to, <laughs> and that's the way to look at this. And whenever you see a candle that first of all closes within the top quarter of the range, let alone closing at the very high, you usually see follow through. In other words, the higher or, or the closer it closes to its highs, the more likely it is to follow through on the next few candles. So these ones that close at their absolute high almost always follow through, okay? Very, very significant. And same with the black one, just in the opposite direction, but just as significant. We opened up here, sellers took control and dominated and closed at the lows of the day. The wider the range, the more important they are, the more of your attention they deserve. On the absolute flip side, you can have much smaller range candles. Now, all of these have names. If you're a candlestick uh, fanatic, you'll know exactly which names uh, associated with which candles, etc. You don't really need to know the names. It really doesn't matter. I really want you to try to read each candle just the way we're doing it here. So have a look at this one. Pro the, the range was pretty much the same range as, as the previous candle here, okay? But look at the bodies of these candles, much smaller. So we can say that this was a, 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 a fairly strong tug of war going on between buyers and sellers. Now, who won the tug of war here? We could say the buyers won this one, sellers won this one, but it was by such a small margin compared to the swing back and forth that it was pretty much a tie, right? And if you look at these candles on the right, these dojis, it's absolutely a tie, okay? We had a tighter range, but you know, we opened here, we went as low as this point, as high as this point, and closed right where we opened. So there was no clear winner, okay? So all of these are known as indecision type candles. And you normally see these at either the top of a trend or at the bottom of a downtrend, okay? That's where they normally appear. <clears throat> and they're indecision type candles. You need to pay attention to these as well because it's usually where we see a turning point, okay? Very, very important. So let's get to a chart now and go through this. And let me show you some clear examples. Now, before I talk more about price action, one quick tip, um, you're gonna have much more success trading charts that are very predictable and <clears throat> very easy to uh, determine what the next direction of that move is. So if you focus on and build watch lists of charts that are trending strongly in one direction or another, be it upward or downward, you're gonna make trading a lot easier on yourself. So here's a great example, AEIS, just a nice steady trend higher. Where is it most likely to continue to move? Upward, right? If you look at another chart here, MASI, same thing, fairly predictable, nice steady. Even the candles themselves, you can see, are all pretty much the same size. So it's very predictable action, as opposed to something like this, okay? If you see a chart like this, you should immediately flip to another chart. This is going to be very difficult to trade, okay? You know, are there strategies out there that can pull off a trade or two within this mess? Of course, but the likelihood here is that it is it will continue to chop around back and forth. So your likelihood of getting stopped out on a trade is much higher on a chart like this. Trading does not have to be this difficult. Stick to the stocks that are trending strongly in one direction or the other, and you will do very well. Okay. Now, getting back to price action. If you remember a few months ago when, when we had the election results, let's go back to the Dow here. Leading into that election night, we had this series of red candles down here. <clears throat> Let me know if you if you can't see it clearly, if you're working on a smaller screen and would like me to zoom in. A little more I can do that for you okay but here if you look at these candles who was winning the battles here the individual battles 
it was it was the sellers and who was in control during this period we can say it was the sellers because if you look at each candle we were consistently making lower highs and lower lows right all the way through until election night we got that gap up and we got one of these bars that was pretty much all body no wicks or tails so we opened at the bottom of the bar here and we closed at the very top here yeah, very significant now not only is that significant but compared to the previous close it was even higher so the way you would look at a bar like that when there's a gap is you can draw it in up to the the previous close and consider that bar to be that long okay it, it's exactly the same thing so that's a huge bar higher com completely dominated by the buyers right now important thing is their follow-through well there was we continue to trade higher and we put in higher low higher high okay the next day we actually open lower but buyers immediately step in and drive this much higher so not only are buyers winning the individual battles but we can say they're fully in control at this point and so we can continue on and judge each candle one by one and see who's winning these battles. And we can also easily tell who's in control. Now, when we get to this candle here, I'm going to zoom in a little closer. When we get to this candle here, who won this battle? Okay. Let's read it. It's red, so it means it opened at, this, at the top of the body, went as high as this point, as low as this point, and closed in here so at first glance we might look at this and say hey the sellers won this one but did they if you compare it to the previous close we actually closed higher than the previous close okay we actually closed higher than the previous high so the the buyers are still in control here they won this battle okay and you can continue on with that and you really have nothing to worry about until you get a candle like this one here reason being is this one closed below the previous candles low so as long as you're you're moving higher and you're putting in higher lows and higher highs higher lows higher highs higher lows higher highs etc you have nothing to worry about there's no reason to be scared out of a trade at this point. That's the beauty of price action and being able to read it candle by candle. It, you, it, it makes you a much more disciplined trader. There, there is nothing to be afraid of here. And as you go through, if you have a substantial profit, you can be scaling out throughout that way. Even if there's a gap one day, you're not giving back all your profits, okay? But when you get to the point where you see a candle that closes below the previous low, now that's a, a red flag, right? And so the way to treat that is not to immediately jump out of that trade, just to mark the low of that bar, okay? And now that's effectively your stop level. And if it were to trade below that, you would exit the trade because it means there's follow through in that direction. But you can see here the very next day, what did we get? We opened higher and we remained above that we never got below that low so buyers are still in control and we continue on until we see another candle that closes below the previous low again we mark that low if we were to get a trade there below there we exit if not we stick with it and we go on and by doing this not only will you remain disciplined but it will keep you in for the bulk of that move so here would have been your exit on this one this candle closed below that low and there was follow through. So if we zoom out a little here, you can see that if we had gotten in somewhere down here, when buyers first took over, it would have taken us right into the top there. Okay. Very simple, very easy. Now you can use whatever strategy you prefer to get into a trade. But then once you're in it, if you read it this way, it is extremely effective, okay? Let's talk about a couple of uh, 
other things here. Um, so what the other thing is the highs and the lows on, on these pivot highs and pivot lows and understanding what is just a pullback versus what a complete what is a complete change in direction okay let's go to a chart of the, the spies for example and show you something here so <clears throat> let's focus in on this area first and here this similar thing after the election we got a pop and we started that uptrend now here's where we started a, a retracement so once we close below the previous low here and there was follow through. Okay. If we were in a long trade, we would exit. But now we know we're in pullback mode. What we don't know at this point is, is this just a retracement before a continuation of that move? Or is this a complete turnaround? And are we starting a new downtrend? That's what you always have to ask yourself. So that's where the pivot highs and lows come in. Any stock where most stocks do not go up or down in a straight line. They do something like this, okay? So these are the pivot lows and these are the pivot highs, those turning points. And they are official when you get that, that lower, lower, lower high after getting those consistent higher lows and higher highs, okay? So when you, when you get that close below that low, all right, now, now that creates that pivot. So this would be a pivot high here, okay? And here, this pivot low here would not actually be identified as a pivot until we had a lower, a higher low and a higher high compared to that. Okay, so on this candle, this would have been identified as that pivot. Okay, so, but knowing these are very important. And as, as we continue on in the presentation, you'll understand why. But for now, let's just look at this uh, pullback in the spies and understand why it was merely just a, a, a retracement. Okay. Because a change in trend requires that we put in lower lows and lower highs overall. So if we look at this and we look back and we identify what's the major low pivot, which is back here, and what's the ma major high pivot back in here. Okay. We, we can look at something like this and say, well, this was close enough, but it's not really a pivot. This is. So for us to change directions, we would require an overall move where the low, the next low pivot is lower than the next, uh, than the low pivot here. We're nowhere near that. Once we turned and created this pivot, we had confirmation that this was just a retracement and now we were starting a continuation of that trend. Okay? so. Price action can also help you identify new entry points like this one. And you can see we went on a nice run, okay? And how long would we have stayed in here? How would we know to stay in here? Again, you follow it candle by candle. As long as the buyers are in full control, you wait for a move below a previous low, and then when it's breached, that's where you exit, okay? Very simple. Now, let's move a little forward here in the chart of the S&P. And have a look at recently here. Now, who was in control throughout this stretch, right? Clearly buyers were in control here. Now here's that first pullback. We pull back here, okay? Did we get below a previous low? And did we put in a, a higher high? Not yet, we're just pulling back. This pivot is created and so we figure this was just a retracement, and now it's a continuation of the trend. Now, this doesn't go very far, does it? And then it turns around here and creates this pivot. But now what do we know? Now we know that we just put in a lower high, okay? We never did get back above this high. 
This low was still higher than the previous pivot low, but now this high is lower than that high. So now when we see this, this is just a, a warning, a heads up that, hey, a change in trend might be coming. What will confirm it? Well, once we get below this low, once we can say we have a, a lower high and then a lower low, which we would have seen on this bar, that's confirmation. So now we're no longer looking for long trades, okay? We're looking for short trades through here, right? So then when we create a pivot and we pull back and we once again create a lower high, then we're looking for an entry to go short here, okay? So that's the difference between just a regular retracement before a continuation of that move and a change in direction, okay? Now, let's zoom in a little here and look at, let me remove these lines and look at what we see right now in the markets. So this is the S&P. And where are we right now? Here, <coughs> excuse me, here we are. Now, what's happened recently here off this move? Look at the low here and look at the low here. We put in a higher low. When we do that, what do we need to do? We immediately go and identify the most recent high, which was here. And what happened the other day on this gap? We surpassed that. So now we have a higher low and a higher high situation, okay? So now in the next pullback here, as long as we don't breach this low, okay? If we come back, say, somewhere in here and put in a pivot, that should be the next run higher, okay? Because we already have our higher low and higher high. Now, as long as this pulls back and does not breach this low, that means it's just a retracement before a continuation of that move higher, okay? Now, if, if instead of pulling back here, we just continue on and breach these highs, well, I mean, we're off and running, absolutely. There's no resistance up ahead. This is all time high. But if we get a pullback, that's fine. If we come back to these lows, then we're probably in for a channel, okay, a range. But as long as you're reading the candles one by one like that, it makes it very, very easy, okay? Um, now, where do those pivots help you? Not just like that, but also with support and resistance. Let me show you quickly here how they work, how well they work. So you can look at any chart and when you see a pivot, you can draw a line from that pivot, okay? When we create a pivot here, draw a line. Create a pivot here, draw a line. Create a pivot here, draw a line. And if you look forward, okay, what these lines are is they create future levels of support and resistance. So when we were back here and we created this pivot, we had no idea what price action was gonna be going forward right? N nothing else to the right of this existed at that point. But had we drawn this line, we do know that at some point, this will be future support or resistance. So when we get back here, when we start pulling back here, we know there's a level of support and it's likely to bounce. We get back to it again and it bounces, right? We get back to it again here and it bounces. Okay. Once we had created this, when we were if we had gotten long in here, let's say we were moving towards that level that would now be resistance, we might want to take some profit here before we tested this resistance zone, right? It's very important to know. So the pivots, you can draw them whenever they're created and leave those lines on. Or when you're about to take a trade, you can just go back and look at those pivots and draw those lines to see where your, your future resistance is going to be that you're going to run into or where you're your support is going to be okay so and especially if you're you're pulling back here during a retracement and you see a pivot and you figure hey this is, hasn't completely changed direction this should mean a continuation of that move higher and you have support behind your move it's very important because if if this starts moving and then turns around on you you know you have support there 
that it's likely to bounce off again or at least stall there and give you a chance to, to get out of that trade. So support and resistance is absolutely crucial for you to know, okay? The other thing you can do to identify support and resistance is use uh, Fibonacci's, okay? A great tool to use. Let, let me show you a couple. There's Fibonacci retracements and there's Fibonacci extensions. The retracement tool will help you confirm a good entry for a trade. So have a look here on the NASDAQ. We went on a run, we pulled back. Once we created that pivot, we knew this should be a continuation of that move higher. But was this a bounce off a strong area of support like we would like it to be? Well, that's where the Fibonacci retracement tool comes in. When you are at an area where you'd like to enter, what you wanna do is look to your left and identify the most recent low and the most recent high. Take your Fibonacci retracement tool, click on the low, click on the high, and now these are the key levels, the 38.2, 50, and 61.8. And I want you to think of this as more of a zone than individual levels. It's a zone of very strong support. So if your pullback comes into that area and bounces out of it, that is a very strong signal. That, that's great. That's exactly how you want to see it, okay? Any move into that area and then a bounce out of it is what you want to see when you get in long. And it works the same, same way to the downside. Now, once you have that, let's say that at this point, we're here. We don't know what's going to happen in the future. We're down here. If we look for pivots to identify the next level of resistance for us, all we have is this one pivot here. That's it. Beyond that, there's nothing above it. Just like now in the markets, we're at all-time highs. Above it, there are no other pivots for us to draw lines on. So how do we know where we're going to run into resistance? Well, that's where the Fibonacci extension tool comes in. That extension tool helps predict future levels of support or resistance. So what we do is when we're about to enter that trade, we take the same low and the same high, and we take our extension tool and draw it on. And now this time, the 100% level, which is that right at that pivot that we had, the 127.2 and the 161.8 level. These are the key ones. These are future levels of support and resistance. And you can see that once we got through the first one, we go to the next one. We kind of, kind of bounce off it a little, come back here, stall, and then break through. When we break through a level of resistance, where are we likely to go? The next level right here, and we bounce off it. And then once we break through, we're off and running again okay so great great tools to use now the other tool you can use if um, you want to day trade uh, with price action is or, which is actually known as an indicator i look at it more as a as a tool is the atr it stands for average true range okay what that tells you is the average movement within each bar over the last 14 bars. So say we take a stock like Tesla, for example, great stock to day trade, and we look at right now, it's this number here that you wanna look at. Right now, if you take the last 14 bars, now this is the daily range, okay? So if you take the last 14 bars on the daily and you average out the move from high to low each day, it's telling you that on average, on an average day, Tesla will move seven dollars and 25 cents from low to high so that's quite a range so if you want to day trade that you, you, there's good money to be made on a range of seven points each day so if you go down to a five minute chart now the average true range on the five minute is about 65 cents from high to low over the last 14 bars so this indicator really helps you understand where there's movement and if you're going to day trade you you want movement if you pick a stock like ge that might have uh, well, let's have a look at GE and see what the range is. There you go, about 27 cents, right? Not as much. It's going to be a lot more difficult for you to come away with it with a nice profit from there. But um, all great tools to use. So your focus should be on reading each candle or each bar one by one and understanding and asking yourself that question. Who is in control or who won that that individual battle on that one bar okay 
who won that individual battle here, and who's in control overall? If you can answer those two questions, then you should know exactly where the market's going next and what to expect. And then you can incorporate the other tools. You can incorporate other indicators if you like. I still trade with many indicators. They do have a purpose. They're not necessary. You could trade just on price action, but they are helpful. And then once you incorporate your money management rules, it all comes together nicely, okay? Now, to help build on this, we've put together uh, a great package for you. And, and once again, we always like to do something special for everyone at Investor Inspiration. And that's what we've done again this time. So this is our pro training class for our price action course. And what you get here uh, during this class, I not only go into a lot more detail on the material I just covered, but I'm also going to share with you two surefire techniques to use trend lines to find trades. And actually, let me give you the link first so we can put it into the chat. It's tradingwinds.com forward slash action. Okay, that'll get you to this page. So using trend lines with price action helps you find some pretty powerful trades. I'm going to teach you two techniques that you can use. I'm also going to show you how to identify and trade, specifically with swing trading, trade channels, which are very powerful when you combine those with price action. Also, as mentioned at the start of the presentation, I started doing this over 30 years ago. Now, when I started, we didn't have all these fancy charting platforms and all these fancy drawing tools on our computers, et cetera. So we did most by hand. Believe it or not, I used to draw my candles using the daily open, high, low, close, take a pencil and a graph, and draw it in and create my own charts. Now, from that came a what I call a pencil and ruler method. It's a strategy that all you need is a pencil and a ruler, and it will tell you exactly what is going to happen next, and it's extremely consistent. It works just as well today as it did 30 years ago, and it will work just as well 30 years from now as it does now. I'm gonna teach you that strategy in this class. I'm also gonna give you three of my money management techniques just to help you complete your trading plan and protect yourself while you're using these techniques. Now, knowing most of you probably already use indicators or, or would like to at some point, I'm gonna throw in a separate class that we teach on the Ichimoku Kinko Hyo indicator, which is a, uh, an indicator that was very popular over in Asia for many years and recently has become a lot more popular here but it's an indicator that can be used as a strategy in itself. So just learning this, you have another strategy that you can use, okay? Now, I use this indicator or a stripped-down version of it mainly for trend, and I talk about that as well in there, <clears throat> but we're throwing that in. Also throw in 30 days of our pro, our TradeWinds Pro service. With this, you're getting a nightly videos from me every Sunday to Thursday, so five times a week where I recap what happened in the markets that day, where I think things are going, and this is where I highlight or, or share all, all the trades that I'm looking at from our different systems. Now, also as part of the pro service, you get uh, our live market chats, which happen twice a week, every Monday evening and every Thursday morning, you get to come into our room and ask me any trading related question you like. All of the sessions, the live sessions are recorded, and will be put, the records will be put in your own personal video library, just like this on-demand training will. Also part of the pro service, every month we do a course of the month for our pro members. You will get that as well at no extra charge. That's another recording that will go into your video library. And for those of you don't, who are just starting out and don't have uh, a charting platform, we'll throw in a 60 days of uh, Metastock Pro for you as well. So tradingwinds.com forward slash action. And we're doing this all for $3. Obviously, it's not a money maker for us. That's not the intention here. Again, we wanted to do something special for everyone at Investor Inspiration, but we really wanted to give you an opportunity to see what we do. And so not only uh, are we teaching you these methods, but not leaving you on your own with it. During those 30 days, I'm here uh, and willing to help you out along the way. Um, I'll give you my email address. It's info at tradingwinds.com. Um, 
anything you want to direct uh, directly to me, just put that in the email. It's info at tradingwinds.com. Any other questions you may have, our staff will be happy to help you out with it. Uh, I really hope you, you join us. Our next live chat is Monday, Monday evening, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. Um, if you uh, do join us and uh, are not able to join the session live because of work or, or any other commitment, but you have a question on this material, any, any other parts of your trading that you're struggling with, you can email me the question ahead of time. I will then answer it during the live session and then you can watch that recording, okay? So no matter what, you'll be able to get your questions answered during these 30 days. Again, it's tradingwinds.com forward slash action. Uh, if I have one more minute here, let me see if I can answer a couple of questions quickly. Um, <clears throat> Niraj is saying, how far below the 61.8 Fibonacci level should one keep their stock loss if they plan to enter long at that level? Um, well, if you don't have a particular technique, you, you know, you just need to give yourself a bit of a buffer. That, that's where the average true range also comes in. Uh, in looking at what the expected high-low range can be. But um, generally, you don't have to put it very far away. It can be just under, under that level, okay? Uh, let, let me just quickly go to the chart before I hand it all back over to our host and, and show you. Let's say that this was the pivot here that, you're, that was the 618 level, even though it isn't, j just hypothetically. If this was the, the 618 level, okay, what you'd want to do is not enter that trade until the, the setup bar that you identify, until the high is taken out, okay? So let's say it was the high of this bar where you were gonna enter your trade. Normally, the range of that one bar is enough, okay? So putting your stop just below that low is good enough because if it turns on you and goes lower than that, you've breached that low, which generally is, is when there's a, uh, a reason to worry. So usually, that's all the risk that you have, and putting your stop just below that 618 level is enough, okay? I'd love to answer more questions, but I've run out of time here. I want to keep this event on schedule. Again, it's tradingwinds.com forward slash action. I hope you can join us. I hope to see you at our event on Monday night. But a big thank you to Renee and everyone else here at Investor Inspiration for having me back on. I really do appreciate it, and hopefully we can do it again soon.